Hello, dear everyone. Thank you so much for being uh, with us uh, throughout all this day. Um, I have to share my personal experience. I wasn't planning on it, but uh, I'm going to take a, a few seconds just to, to share. Um, I'm really overwhelmed, to be honest. Um, we, we get an amazing responses uh, on the chat uh, at Zoom and on different medias. People love the speakers. And I just want to thank from the bottom of my heart to all the speakers. And I'll share with you that I'm super excited. <laughs> uh, I had, you know, I, I mean, it makes me think of the gap between uh, the dream and the vision and the process of implementation. Because we speak about, uh, about new world economy and uh, well-being. And to be honest, I had such a stressful day. <laughs> I've been spending the entire morning trying to let it go and to practice what I preach and connect to well-being. So bear with me. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my presentation and I'm really grateful for all of you for being with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, so about me, uh, I'm a Bachelor of Design in Industrial Design uh, and I've studied the Masters of Administration in Marketing. Uh, and I have over a decade of experience in product development, business strategy, trend research, marketing and content creation for leading global companies. Today, I am a lecturer, researcher, mentor, and strategist. I specialize in business development for designers and creatives. Creativity and the business world. So as someone who went to both academies, and I'm familiar with both sides of, uh, of the spectrum, um, I can tell uh, that I, I see that the common movement is usually mostly one way than the other. When Googling uh, a term I like to call creativity management, you can mainly find, find ways uh, in which business world can use and sometimes adv uh, take advantage of uh, creativity uh, for its own profit and gain, uh, enabling a competitive advantage innovation, uh, design thinking, styling, and more. As being in both acad academies, I was really surprised with the gap between the cre what happens in uh, creativity academies and what happens in the business world academies. In my master's of business, uh, the only class that spoke, not uh, directly, but spoke about design was called new product development. The word design wasn't even in the curriculum and vice versa. Uh, for designers, when I speak today with my clients, with creatives, creators, designers, when I talk about topics like target market research, competition anal analysis, strategy, position, segmentation, pricing, and much more, their eyes lit up and they, they, they're amazed that no one taught them that. When I was in the academy, we had a one semester class called Marketing for Designers. That's just not enough. I want to be active in diminishing this gap between creatives and the business world. Today, I'm driven to develop this field that I term creativity management, empowering and supporting creatives to thrive, enabling them to bring their gift to the world, inspire and create a movement of change. I believe that as designers and as creatives, like the other speakers today talked about, we have an important role of society, being healers, creating a movement of change, being proactive, and as I said earlier today, speaking the language of yes, doing instead of talking about. I feel that if I promote creatives, I promote inspiration in the world, and I promote helping uh, to manifest um, a new world of, uh, of hope like we all uh, inspire. But <laughs> I'm not here to talk about that today. That was just generally le letting you know who I am. Today, I'll be sharing my personal story of overcoming. I will present to you my final project from Shankar 15 years ago and some new resolution resolutions I just recently had about it. And with it, I'll share the main principles I believe that can help us manifest this new world economy we crave to. So back then, I designed these four objects um, 
that were um, poetic, uh, wearable pieces combining wood and textile. Uh, when I worked on this project, I, I no, I will say this, like, uh, I think that for a design student, it's a rare opportunity that you don't get that much in your life, just having a whole year to, to work on something without too many constraints and limitation, without having a boss or budget or, you know, just a full year to explore something. And I went full on and I explored. And I started, it's, it's funny now that I understand it, uh, it's funny how I started it. So I'll share the main milestones from the process and what I realized in it. Uh, so back then, in the beginning of the fourth year, I started uh, thinking I'm interested in exploring the connection between fashion and industrial design, the connection between uh, hard and soft materials. I tried to create textures, softening tough materials, uh, combining one another, checking the boundaries, uh, checking out soft connections to hard materials, until I came to, oh, sorry, even um, creating wearable uh, furniture. You see this wearable coat with a plant in it and a, and a cup, etc. So I really explored <laughs> all sides of, uh, of this combination of wooden textiles. Until I've reached this uh, important milestone. So that's me 15 years ago, <laughs> creating this weird object. I didn't even know where, where they came from and what they meant. Like it just came out of me. My dearest uh, mentor at Shankar back then, who I really hope is on the line watching now, Barak Asher, thank you, Mr. Barak Asher, has told me back then, just do, work with your heart and with your hands. Sometimes we don't comprehend the things that we do. I, I tried to rationalize and to understand why am I doing this and what is it, but it was strong and people reacted it and encouraged me to, to just create, to just connect to my intuition and to creativity and to, to create. And then I kept on sketching and developing these weird garments, uh, combining wood and textiles, not knowing what they are, but just keep designing and developing it and getting encouraged and getting feedback how many associations people have on it, how many meanings does it have, takes them to millions of different places. I knew it was something strong. None of us had an idea what was it yet. Eventually, I created these four objects. Back then, I defined it, defined it as wearable poetic pieces combining wood and textile. Today, I know I was dealing with constrained femininity I was dealing with the struggle between uh, criticism, constraints, toughness, strictness, and between my inner vulnerability, softness, gentleness, and femininity. I think throughout the history, mankind sometimes uh, fearful in a way from strong, freed women. And I really acted out of fear back then when I was young. I was acting out of wanting to please, please the academy, please my husband, please the business world later on, please anyone but me. Now I know that these items were a gesture or an ode to a constrained femininity and to a vulnerability that I was so scared I wanted to protect. And uh, I believe today we have room for freed women and men and for us to put down the constraints and connect to our vulnerability. I will now explain how I interpret these objects today after 15 years and what I understand I did there and designed there. And I really think uh, it's a poetic uh, ode and gesture to femininity and to vulnerability and to be freed from constraints. So that's the first object. Today, I name it sternum centerpiece splitting the torso into half at the sternum, hard piece of matter piercing through between female breasts, emphasizing their softness and beauty. The second piece is this one, which I named just recently, womb armor. I've placed a heavy, dense square piece of wood on the sensitive complex organ we call womb 
our strength to, br to bring life to the world and our vulner vulnerability. The third object is this one, sensual lower back emphasize. I've placed a thin, tempting, elegant piece of wood emphasizing the seductive beauty of the female figure, lower back and bottom, naughty and flirty, celebrating only in my mind back then, the possibility for sexual freedom. And the last and strongest piece, the way I feel about it, is this one, which I called tamed softness, a long, hard, tough spine this woman is bound to, crucified, restrained and constrained, softness and freedom that are restrained. When I um, uh, did my presentation, another one of uh, the amazing lecturers at Chinkar, Mr. Leibovich, <laughs> had told me, it will take you 10 years to understand what you did here. Uh, these look like amazing objects from a stand on a, on a shelf in the Isimiyaki store, something that you would never want to open, that you buy it just for it to be closed. So it took me 15, but I think I got it. <laughs> and uh, I think for me, in my personal journey, these wrapped objects serve as souvenirs from an old battle. Souvenirs that I, I hope for myself that I'll never use and I'll never open again. There's something that belongs to, to an ancient history when I thought it's not allowed to bring yourself fully to the world to practice softness, gentleness, and vulnerability, and to celebrate your femininity, that it's allowed, that it's not dangerous, that you don't need to work out of season, season. Um, So now, after uh, describing this journey, I'd like to summarize and share the main principles from my personal journey toward uh, pencil, personal sorry, well-being, which I believe is the key to a new world of hope. We've discussed today about activism, about communities. We still have a lot to go, but for me now, we're, we're coming to the part that I'm most excited about, that isn't even about design. It's about designing our well-being. And I think that's the key. And I think when we begin there, everything is easier. So I tried to summarize my main takeoffs. So number one is intuition and creativity. I think uh, we have healthy, beneficial intuition if we only listen to it. There is a five minute second, sorry, window in which our intuition speaks to us and we can listen or we can shut it down. Uh, so intuition is something important. And the other topic is, okay, so if I, I connect it to the project, devoting to my intuition enabled me to create these pieces. Uh, the other topic here is creativity. I think you can't create out of fear. I think if we want to heal fear and to be in a place that doesn't have anything to do with polarity and to connect to human experience and to one another, we need to act more out of creativity. And this forum is about the creative industry, but we are all creators. Have you ever seen a little child in the kindergarten not painting with crayons? We were all born cre 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 creative, sorry. So I, I, I think it's so important to connect to it. Uh, the second principle for me is self-connection. I had times when my self-connection wasn't as good as it is today. And there is always a place to, to look to and, and to improve and to make it better and better. But uh, just being connected to yourself, to your well-being, I think us as intellectuals, we, we're way too much in our heads. And for me, recently, I experienced uh, connecting to our body, using uh, breathing, not just to be alive, but as a tool to take care of your well-being. Using movement, we're gonna see a Gaga uh, session soon, and you, you'll get to experience how movement feels like. Connecting to your sexuality. Narkis, the speaker that is following me, speaks about connection to your sexuality and the way it helps you to bring yourself fully to the business world and to every place that you exist. So self-connection in every term, just being con connected to yourself. Uh, bring value. That's a principle that I found uh, that really relieves a lot of creators. Creatives 
are kind of scared to be, uh, you know, like to, to celebrate their amazingness and goodness. And once I speak with them about bringing value, about healing, by healing others, it releases them and it enables them to bring their gifts. I can say with full confidence that when I see a designer today practices good business strategy, close good deals, have a fat bank account, bank account yeah, it's, it's okay to want it, and manages to do business creatively, to not give up their creativity, and to use managerial to tools, I experience healing. I experienced giving them what I needed when I was younger, and that's what I act from. So when you act out of healing others, you're not self-obsessed and it's just easier. Just focus on bringing value. And uh, the last point is about uh, love and connectivity and belonging. I succeeded well in the business world, but I never belonged there. Ever since I made my change, I feel that I belong. It's true that we are all creatives, but I feel myself belong to, to the creative community, to people that are more sensitive, more creative, more fragile, and have an amazing gift to bring to the world. If only, the, if only we knew and learned how to manage it. So I think uh, practicing love, being connected with people, acting always out of a place of love and open hearted, and finding where you can belong is definitely a key. I will finish with congratulating myself and wishing to myself that these war objects will never be opened again and that I'll keep my journey in personal healing and in supporting my community and healing others. And uh, I want to wish each and every one of you to go through this journey. Earlier today, I was talking about this journey, this spectrum between a survival mode and between the ability to strive and to prosper and to be in abundance. Each and every one of us experienced this journey on and off. And I hope in a way I inspired you to thrive more and to take care of your well-being because it is possible and it is sort of privilege. It's the only way. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being us with us. Sorry. And I will now welcome uh, the next speaker, Marquis Salon, that will sh soon come. Thank you, everyone.